Welcome to Altium Designer Editing Schematic Graphics, or as I like to say, making it pretty. Here we will learn about adding text and graphics to our schematics. Adding graphics and text can have a significant impact on how your schematics are received. Providing on-sheet documentation through text and images can make them more readable and better convey design intent. Here we have the plain Jane version of the digital I.O. schematics. Contrast this with the same schematic augmented with graphics and text. Likewise, the Relay I.O. with and without added graphics. The visual impact is significant, but more importantly, the schematics are easier to follow and clearer to someone unfamiliar with the design. So how do we add text to the schematics? We add text by using the Place command either from the pull-down menu or by right-clicking on the schematic sheet and selecting Place, then String. We now have a text string attached to the mouse. To edit the string, hit the Tab key. Now that we have added the desired text in the window, while we're at it, let's change a few other things. To change the font or the font size, click on the active font and change as needed. We'll increase the size of the font. To change the color, click on the block of color and select the desired new color. I'll go ahead and hit OK. You can place the string by rotating it. Again, the typical tapping of the space bar is what's used. To re-edit the string once it has been placed, you would simply double click on the text string and that reopens up the annotation window. Oftentimes I will add text to detail switch settings, mode selections needed for the circuit, or for an I2C device address. Aside from adding text, another useful feature is the ability to add graphics to the schematics. Combining graphics and text adds significantly to the schematics readability. To access the basic graphic elements, use the pull down menu from the graphics icon. Here we see the various types of graphics that are available. These would include lines, polygons, elliptical arcs, bezier lines, text strings, which we've already seen, hyperlinks, text frames, which are very useful for multi line text, rectangles, rounded rectangles, ellipses, pie charts, and graphic images. Adding a graphic line is straightforward. Select line and then using the mouse to define the starting and ending points, like so. To end the line drawing, just right-click. The line can have many or just one segment, and you can modify its endpoints, as you can see. Again, a caution about confusing lines and wires. Only wires can provide electrical connections. To add a polygon, click on the Polygon option from the pull-down graphics menu, and you can begin to place the vertices on the schematics. As you place vertices, you will see that the polygon has a fill color. As you would expect, hitting the Tab key will bring up the Properties window where you can change the fill color and the line width. Right-clicking completes the polygon. The elliptical arc and bezier lines take practice and require a number of mouse clicks. Consider playing with these if you're interested in using them. Here is a quick example of the elliptical arc. Our first click clicks the center. The second click is the extent of the x-axis and then you have the y-axis. To escape this mode sometimes requires two right mouse button clicks, but most often just one. Placing a hyperlink is similar to text, but has provisions for the HTTP address as such. Using hyperlinks might be a good option for referencing online data sheets. Placing text frame provides a single element with multiple lines to be placed. Clicking on it brings up a box that can be resized and then placed in the schematics. Before you place it, hit the Tab key so that you can edit its entries. As expected, you can change the fonts, the size and color, as well as the border width and the fill color. If you've already placed it and want to edit it, double-click on it, and that pulls up the same properties window. The rectangle and rounded rectangle are basically the same, so we'll place a rounded rectangle as an illustration. After selecting it from the drop-down menu and before placing it, you may hit the Tab key. Again, configuring color for the fill-in borders, the border width, and the radius on the corners. We'll place this over the logic in the digital I.O. schematic sheet. Notice that the newly placed graphic covers the already placed elements. This is due to the order of placement, last being topmost. To fix this, click on the Edit, Move, and Send to Back. Now with the crosshair, click on the block to send it to the back. One note, if the fill color you're using is dark, you may notice the electrical hotspots for the pins. 
They look like four small dots on the ends of the component pins and where connections are made with wires. These are the proper endpoints for wires in order to make the connection, and they normally do not show up with a very light or no background color. Typically, I would add rectangles around logic blocks and then add a text string describing the circuit. We've already seen an example of that with the Relay I.O. schematic. We'll look at that again just to show you what it looks like finished. Now that we have added graphics and text to the schematics, we're going to want to number them. Altium provides a means for numbering the schematic sheets and provides a means also for ordering the schematic sheet numbers when there are multiple sheets in the design. Looking at our project, after adding graphics and text, we can now number all of the schematics. Using the Tools pull-down menu, we select Annotation and then Number Schematic Sheets. You may have noticed this option before when we were looking at schematic annotation in a prior module. This opens up the sheet numbering window where we can assign and change the numbering and the order of the schematics. First, let's look at the auto sheet number pull-down. You'll notice that there are a few options here that we could use to drive the order and the numbering for the schematics. For now, we will use the defaults. Now moving on to the auto document number pull-down, we see there are many options here for driving the numbering of documents in the design, as well as adding a prefix. This is to allow for custom numbering schemes if your company requires it. We're not actually going to be using the auto document, so we're not going to bother with adding too much here. To start the numbering, hit the Auto Sheet Number button once. This will assign numbers to the sheets in the order that they were added in the original project. At this point, we can change the ordering of the schematics as needed. We will make the processor schematic sheet the first one and leave the rest as they are. To do so, select the processor interface schematic and you will see the Move Up and Move Down buttons are now active. Clicking on the Move Up will raise the selected schematic in the ordering. Note just the order is changed at this point. We will need to re-hit the auto sheet number, like so, to renumber everything. Now with the schematics ordered and numbered, we can go ahead and click on the update sheet count, and now we see that we have a total of five sheets. If we needed document numbering, we could click on the auto document number button as well. Since we're not using it, clicking on it won't do much, but it does show the effect, so let's click on it now. Hitting OK closes the sheet numbering window and updates the schematics parameters for the sheet number and total sheet count. As you can see, we now have sheet numbers and total counts displayed. At this point, we are ready to print the schematics. We can either print a basic set of schematics, or we can use the Smart PDF Printing option. Clicking on File and Print, we get the typical setup and configuration options for printing. We're not going to go ahead and print. Instead, we're going to actually utilize the Smart PDF option. Again, under File, selecting Smart PDF, opens up the Smart PDF wizard. Click Next and proceed to the wizard to set up for printing. We will select the current project and the output file, name and location, and then hit Next. We can now select which files to include in the print. Currently, they are all highlighted. Clicking Next, we have the option to create a bill of materials. We will not select it at this point, but if the components all had supplier information, then we could use this to generate a bill of materials for the project and put it into the Smart PDF. We will explore the bill of materials generation more fully in a later module. Clicking Next, we can see some settings for the PDF file. Make sure to check color if you want color. Keeping the defaults is a good start, however. The smart part of the Smart PDF is the inclusion of net names, ports, and pins that are searchable in the PDF file. Clicking Next brings up another option for printing. We can either print the design based on the physical or the logical sheets. As we have a flat design, this is not really relevant. If we'd had a multi-sheet, higher article design, we might want to have the prints follow the physical structure so that they had the proper reference designators on each sheet. Again, with a flat design, this is not really an issue. Clicking Next brings us to the last page of the wizard, where we can choose the Open PDF file box after it's exported, and whether or not we want to generate and save the settings to an output job file. For this module, we will just have the PDF open only. Now we can click Finish. When the printing is complete, the PDF file opens and we can review it. Looking at the PDF file, we see the top-level schematic prints entry with a plus sign. If we had an included PCB, there would be an entry for that as well. Clicking on the plus sign opens up the sublisting of the five schematics in the design. Expanding on one of the schematics, we can see there are three sublistings, Components, Nets, 
and ports. We can use these to find and highlight in the PDF the selected component, net, or port. Selecting the component causes the reference designator to be highlighted in the schematics, like so. Opening up the nets and following down the tree, we can pick a pin on the net, and it will be highlighted as well. The same operation can be done on ports, allowing for a quick way to explore the schematics in detail. In this module, we have covered adding text and graphics to the schematics to provide documentation and organization. We've also numbered the design sheets and printed them using the Smart PDF Tool Wizard. Using these features provides a more professional and readable set of schematics.